Hello and welcome to The Coaches Show. This is Gary Live and Good with head football coach Jonathan Tennant. Coach, we're here in a, I won't call it a remote trailer or a uh, trailer here doing The Coaches Show today at Preston High School. Week four, you're on the road again down in North Marion, your alma mater down in North Marion. And uh, things don't start out too well. The kickoff, North Marion kicks off, tries on side kick. Yeah, we, we expected that and we were ready for that. We got that. Uh, that's about the only thing that went right in the first half for us. And then as you go along, you, you, you got the ball, but you didn't score. Uh, you had some penalties. You got the ball down, I think, inside the, what, the five-yard line, and you, you couldn't score in your first drive. Yeah, we uh, had a penalty, which uh, ruined the drive, basically, from, from there. Uh, we managed to get down to about the one inch line on fourth down. We threw a pass into the end zone, and the kid looked like he caught it, but he, he wasn't in the end zone. So that was when we get down there, we got to score. We got to do a better job at that. Uh, our, the main problem has been penalties down there. So we've got to focus and understand that when we get the ball that close, we have to get it home. North, or you, uh, North Marion uh, hits the ball, they punt to us. In a short field. Next thing you know, uh, Shroud runs an eight-yard run. You're up seven to nothing in the first quarter. Yeah, we had the first that first half. We only had the ball three times. Um, I was wondering why we weren't up by more, but then when I realized we only had the ball three possessions in the first half, and, um, we scored on one. We got stopped at the goal line on another. So uh, our defense didn't help us out in the first half. Gave up 13 points and and limited the, our opportunities on offense. On well, the second quarter, the fullback from North Marion, the Wheeler boy, you just, they controlled the clock and you just couldn't stop that Wheeler boy. Yeah, um, defensive front, we, we weren't slanting as hard as we should have been. Uh, linebackers weren't stepping up. They had, we got to do a better job of taking on blocks. And the big issue was they were, we were getting the edge. Uh, they were hurting us on the outside and the inside. It was, uh, it was pretty, uh, scary there for a minute. But you change the defense. Yeah. You change the defensive formation, uh, what, four down, two up? Yeah, we did that for a while. We, uh, the biggest thing we did at halftime was change personnel. Uh, we flipped our outside linebackers and we brought in Bub DeWitt at, at nose and he seemed to give us a real big spark. Every time I turned around I heard Bub DeWitt after you brought him in there. I mean, he yeah. was, he was uh, a wheeler boy didn't get by him, and I think he even uh, tackled the quarterback a couple of times. So yeah. He came in there and just really uh, stopped Wheeler in their running, uh, running right. game. He uh, he played 23 plays in the second half. He ended up with, I think, four or five tackles out of those 23 plays, so he was definitely a factor. But North Marion scores two touchdowns, Coach, and you win at halftime, and you're down 13-7. to seven. What are you telling your boys at the... Uh, well, on. I told them they better get buckwheat cakes off <laughs> their mind and bow hunting off their mind and, and, and finish this ball game because this is, this is not acceptable at, at this point in the development of this program is to go down there and, and get beat by a, a winless team. Uh, they knew they were better than what they were showing. So, and we made some changes in personnel and no one panicked. Um, Offense, all we needed was an opportunity, and we could score, but it was up to the defense. That was the main focus at halftime, was making de defensive adjustments, uh, both physically and mentally. And your offense has been scoring 28 points a game, but here it is at halftime. You scored seven points against a team that's been giving up 50 points a game. And uh, when I was listening to it on the radio, I said, uh-oh, here we go. You're playing down to North Marion's level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was wondering too. What are we doing? And then I realized we only had the ball three times in the first half and scored on one of them, stopped at the goal line the other. So I knew uh, we had to make some changes on defense and, and get, so we can get the ball back to the offense and give them a chance. And I kept wondering, where's 24, where's 24, where's 24? But when you only run the ball two or three series. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, uh, that was the frustrating part. The good thing is the kids responded. Uh, they didn't panic, but they came out, uh, refocused themselves, and, and played a lot better in the second half. In the first, and of course, in the first half, Stone didn't complete a pass. I think only threw two or three, but didn't complete a pass. And uh, we did, again, we didn't see. Basically, you played poorly the first half. Yeah, 
And that's that's about it. And uh, you get into the third quarter, and there's another onside kick. And I guess there's a big controversy on the recovery of the uh, onside kick. Yeah, we watched them on film. Their center on their uh, kickoff return dropped. He was already lined up three yards behind the 50. And before the ball's kicked, he's dropping at least five. So we knew... If we were going to onside it, we'd have to go right in the middle. And Coach Forbes reminded me at halftime, you know, we got that onside. So I said, well, we might as well try it because the way our defense was playing at that point, we didn't really want to give them the ball. And we wanted to get our offense a chance. So we went ahead and rolled the dice and we came out on top. And uh, you, go back, you go back to the power eye and you run noose, 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 shroud. And uh, at the end of the third quarter, you're up 14-13. Yeah, and uh, that was nice to see. Uh, we were running uh, 40 and 41 trap. Uh, that's been a good play for us the last couple of years with Noose and Bub trapping and the Schaefer boys trapping. Uh, they really like that play, and it's been very successful. And that's, and that's what uh, we relied on in the second half. And you have not been very successful in the PATs all year. Got a new boy in the Farrell boy come in and... Yeah, the sophomore, he's, uh, yeah. soccer's his number one sport. We get to use him on Thursdays, and uh, he works out with us. And it was time for him to see what he could do. I uh, put him in there in a pressure situation, with, tied at 13, and uh, he came through. I knew he's got the ability, he just hadn't had the reps in practice yeah. to uh, earn that spot. But he earned it last uh, the other night. So you've got your PATs uh, fixed up now. Fourth quarter, Noose 70-yard run, Shroud 29-yard run, Noose 8-yard run, Noose a 22-yard pass from Stone. Final score, Preston 42, North Marion 19. Yeah, I think we we uh, warmed down a little bit in the second half, especially the fourth quarter. We just kept coming, kept coming with our power game, and, and they couldn't sustain it. Um, that's the conditioning we do starting in January. We run that mountain, we lift weights. Uh, our kids weren't tired. They got tired. Carried all those two of fours or whatever it was we <laughs> yeah. were carried around. <laughs> yeah. Your quarterback, one for nine. Is that a combination of receivers not running the routes or dropping the ball or or, or Scott's just not uh, that accurate right now? Well, it's, it's a combination of everyone. Offensive line, uh, receivers, quarterback. Uh, if we don't run the right route, then it's an inaccurate pass or doesn't have time to throw it, doesn't have time to see the receivers. So we've definitely got to fix that. Um, that's been a focus this week and it will continue to be until we get it right. Janiah, Josiah Noose is back on the go again. 234 yards, two touchdowns. Great game for the young man. and uh, He was nominated for the WDTV uh, Player of the uh, Week. And I don't know when they make the announcement, but uh, mm -hmm. you get 234 yards, two touchdowns. Cameron Trout had his best game. Seven yeah. rushes, 94 yards, and two touchdowns. Yeah, it was on the same play. They just happened to be uh, switching positions. And uh, that 40-41 trap has been real good for us. Coach, you go to 3-2 and two on the year. North Marion goes to 0-4. Oh Coach... The season's flying by. Here we are, mid-season already. Yeah, we just talked about that after practice. Uh, you know, we can we can guarantee them five more games. Anything after that, they've got to earn. <laughs> Coach, uh, injury report. Everyone come out all right? Uh, Friday, yes. Uh, everyone came out all right. Uh, we had a couple kids not play uh, because of injury. Uh, we're going to get one back. Came back to practice uh, Monday and yesterday. And one we're still not sure about. He's got to go back to the doctor, and hopefully he'll, he'll be back. And uh, looking at some scores, Bridgeport, 41, East Fairmont, no, zero. Team we play here in a few weeks. Buchanan, 41, Oak Hill, 27. But Buchanan, evidently. Uh, yeah, they're sitting at 3-1. and one. Yeah. Uh, they got to come to our place. on our. Uh, that'll be our pink out night. That's going to be really exciting. That's going to be uh, a very important game for us. They got a little. We have a little revenge coming back, don't we? Yeah, we didn't uh, <laughs> play very. That's where the wheels fell off last year. Those last two ball games that started yeah. in Buchanan, and we didn't play very well, and we let that one get away. Yeah, Fairmont Senior, forty-two, Elkins seven. 
Uh, we th I thought Elkins when they started out was going to have a good ball team, but they've just kind of yeah, they're they're limited in numbers yeah. and Fairmont. Yeah. They're just going to get better. I look in a couple of years, they're going to be uh, uh, one of the top teams in the state. Hampshire wins their second ball game of the year, twenty-one to fourteen over Mountain Ridge, Maryland. R.C. Bird forty-three, Grafton seven. Yeah, I guess Grafton uh, getting into a tougher part of their schedule. Uh, it's a little tougher sledding. And again, University High School, 42, Muscle, 21. Uh, Coach Kelly said, I don't know how we did this or whatever, whatever, but 42, 21 over Muscle. Usually Muscle has a pretty good ball team. Yeah, I believe uh, Muscle was up 21 to nothing at one point, and University came back. Yeah. It's a sign of a good football team. Coach, I go online and looked at some of your uh, mid-season stats. Offensively, you're scoring... Uh, 25, 26 points a game, and only giving up 21 points. Your defense has really came around this year. Yeah, uh, we were disappointed. We gave up uh, 19 against North Mary, and we held them for the most part in the second half. Um, our special teams have been disappointing this year. Um, that's what set, set up their last touchdown. We had some kids injured, like I said, and we had put some young kids, inexperienced mm -hmm. kids in there, and it, it hurt us. Rushing yardage, you're up over five games, 1,357 yards, or 254 yards per game rushing. That's some, that's about 80, 90 percent of your offense. Yeah, we'll take that. Um, we we want to be more balanced, but at this point, it's still a work in progress. And I have faith in our passing game, but we'll get it together. We're, we're going to have to. If we're going to go where we want to be. We're going to have to be able to throw the football. Because you've got some good tough opponents coming up here last part of the year. Bridgeport, Buckcannon, University High School. Yeah. Yeah, so we have to we have to be more balanced because uh, it's not hard to stop one part of an offense. I mean, if you can load up and stop the run, if that's all you're worried about, then yeah. you, you're in the driver's seat. But when you've got to defend both the run and pass, it makes it a little tougher. You're 22 for 67 passing. 266 yards, only 53 yards per game through the air. Some of that is uh, we haven't had to pass, and the other part of it, like I said, we just haven't executed yeah. in the passing game for various reasons. But one thing that, you know, I looked at the penalties, you have 72 yards per game in penalties. Yeah, we're, we, uh, some of those penalties our aggressive penalties we don't get too concerned about, but others, uh, we had a couple bad ones against North Marion, unsportsmanlike and a, a false start. Uh, those are, are going to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. They have been dealt with. But those are unexcusable. Uh, unsportsmanlike penalties are, are selfish penalties. Uh, if you're going to do that, then you're not going to see the field. And looking at the, your punting game, you're only averaging 27 yards a punt. Yeah, we knew we'd miss, miss uh, Mitchell Thrift. Yeah. Uh, our number one punter was uh, hurt. He was out. He didn't, hasn't practiced very much, but he got off a nice one. Uh, we're kind of doing it by committee now. Um, maybe in the future we won't punt as much. I mean, we'll just go for it instead. <laughs> Coach, looking at scoring by quarter, first quarter, Preston 26 points in the first five games, your opponent's 28. Second quarter, Preston scores 13 points, your opponent scores 27. Third quarter, both opponent and you score 27. Fourth quarter, Preston 62, your opponent's 27 points. Your opponents outscore you in the first half, in all first five games, your opponents have outscored you. Yeah, we've got to do a better job out of the gate. Uh, that really hurt us against North Marion. Like I said, uh, I don't think we were focused as we needed to be. On the other side, though, in the fourth quarter, uh, we like to call the fourth quarter our own uh, through you know, the way we condition, the way we work yeah. in the off season. Uh, that's the way it should be. That's the way we want it. But we've got to do a better job up front. 62 to 23 in the fourth quarter. Total in the second half, total points in five games, pressing 89, your opponent's 50. That's, uh, that's the way we like it. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> Josiah News. Again, I think. He may be a little bit ahead of last year's uh, stats. Total right now, uh, 100, or 920 yards rushing. 
for Josiah. Yeah, 920 through five games, uh, that, that's pretty strong. Uh, the competition's going to get better uh, toward the end of the season, but um, we have a lot of faith in him. He works real hard. He, he deserves every yard he gets because he's earned it in the weight room. Uh, he, he works, he works in the, on the scout team. Uh, he doesn't take a playoff from practice, and uh, he's just a joy coach. Cameron Shroud is uh, also getting more looks at the ball. 23 carries, 208 yards. <clears throat> Pardon me. Austin Powell, 21 carries, 97 yards. So you've got some other players besides Josiah that uh, can run yeah. football. We've been really, really uh, surprised in, uh, with Austin Powell's production. Um, he's came in and played a fullback position. He's thrown some great blocks for Josiah. And when he gets a chance, he's running over people. He made a cut the other night that I couldn't believe. He put his foot in the ground and cut it up and got 10 more yards. So we're tickled to death with his production. That's number 44 on the program, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so watch for number 44 in front of 24 come Friday night when the Hedgesville like, Eagles come into town. We like to call him Bash and Dash. Bash and Dash. 68 points. Josiah leads the Big Ten in scoring and in rushing right now after uh, five ball games. 68 points. 120, what, 126 or 128 last year? I'm not sure. Uh, Close that. I think he had uh, 11, 12, something like, like that. He was up there. Yeah, he's got 11 touchdowns right now uh, in the first half, so uh, he's putting the ball in the uh, end zone when you get down inside the red zone. Uh, kick returns. Dylan Smith, your best returner, 162 yards. Uh, averaging that was 30 yards per return on kickoffs. Yeah, we're, we're not happy with our kickoff returns at this point. Um, Dylan hasn't played in the last couple games. Uh, we had to do that by committee. Um, either they're kicking it and squibbing it, and we're not getting a handle on it. Uh, in my mind, we should have taken a couple back at this point. I know this point last year, I think we've already had mm -hmm. two uh, kickoff returns for touchdown. But it hasn't happened this year, but I think we're getting closer. In the midseason, look at some of the overall defensive stats. You know, number 22, Austin Newsom is your leading tackler right now. Yeah, those stats, the thing I like about those tackles is that it's pretty balanced at the top. Yeah. You've probably got your, your five, top five or six tacklers all with 20, yeah. 25, 30 tackles yeah. all around, all bunched up. It's just not one person. It's a whole team defense. Yeah. 22, Austin Newsom. 44, Austin Powell. 26, Cameron Shroud. 34, Casey Shroud, 17, Dylan Smith, and number 14, Ryan Deal. He's he's kind of snuck in here somewhere. Yeah, yeah he uh, he was he's been a surprise for us since August. Uh, he's probably playing out of position the first part of the season, but he played in more of his natural position against North Marion, and we were real tickled that he came up and uh, filled the alley on the run. And uh, he, he delivered some hard hits. We we're real happy about that. He's what, only a junior? Junior. Junior. Coach, the uh, SSAC rankings for week five of out. Cabell Midland, number one. Capital two. Point Pleasant, three. University of High School team that you're going to play here uh, at University of High School in a few weeks is number five. Lewis County, a team that you gave a good fight uh, down Lewis County, moved up to number 11 in this uh Week five, Buchanan, opponent coming up, three and one, ranked number sixteen. That's the bubble. Yeah, but Preston moved up to number eighteen this week. Yeah, we're moving up. Uh, we want to get up in a couple more notches. Uh, we can win more games, and our opponents that we defeated, they win. That gives us more points. So uh, we've got to get through these next couple games, and then uh, we'll see where we really are uh, come. The last three weeks of the season. And of course, Hedgesville is 0 4, thus, the chances of you getting many points is not going to happen, is it? Um, At least a triple A school. Yeah, but it would be good to get the points if we beat them because they are a triple A school. Oh, yeah. um, Hedgesville reminds me a lot of Fairmont Senior. They have a lot of skilled kids, they have a, a big play capability, and that's what beat us against Fairmont Senior three big plays. So. We've got to be able to come out and control the football, run the football, and throw it when we need to, and we've got to stop their perimeter game. And looking at the double-A uh, ratings for week uh, five, Bridgeport, 
dropped down to number six, three and one. Fairmont Seniors two and two, and they're hanging around the uh, playoff line. R.C. Bird dropped down to twenty. East Fairmont's twenty uh, fourth, one and three. North Marion is zero and four, and they're down to thirty three for uh, mm. for week five. And looking at your schedule, you know next week we're back home, Coach. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be strange. <laughs> it's going to be very strange. It's been a long time. Well, on the road you end up two and two, right? Yeah. We, so uh, not too bad. Not too bad, but uh, there's a, there's one game in there that's gonna stick yeah. out. It, it sticks out to me, but can't do anything about it now. Non-conference Triple A Hedgesville comes into uh, Knight Stadium this Friday, October third, zero and four. Then you're open. Mm -hmm. Is that coming at the right time? Yes, it is. Um, like to have it this week, but we don't. But um, as far as uh, the rest of the schedule goes, yeah, that's that's a perfect time. Uh, we'll have a week off before we go into those uh, last four critical games. So I like our I like our schedule. East Fairmont comes into Knight Stadium on the seventeenth. Homecoming. Homecoming. Yes. Uh, week. Then you're on the road to Morgantown to play University High School. Then Buck Cannon comes into Knight Stadium on the thirty-first. We end the season here at Knight Stadium against uh, Bridgeport. So uh, we're going to be at home here next uh, four games. Yep. Uh, most important one right now, though, is Hedgesville. Uh, like I said, they, they had some players that can make some big plays. They got some speed. Hedgesville, Triple A school. Last year, Hedgesville, and that game, forty-six to forty, Hedgesville won, and that. And well, we've talked about it before. That's water we, over the dam, but if we make our extra points, we win that game. <laughs> uh, we had just had a bye week this week. Yeah. So they get a rest and get all healed up. They got a brand new coach down there, Aaron Fiddler. And we all around here know his father, Alan Fiddler, when he was down Moorfield all those years and bringing mm -hmm. in all those championships for Moorfield. Went to Glenville. Now he's coaching down in Virginia. But uh, anyway, Aaron Fiddler, the new coach down at Hedgesville. And uh, zero and four, and tell us about your preparation defensively for. I know they got this number two uh, Brown boy, six foot one eighty, and they got a couple other, like you said, skilled players. Yeah, uh, defense. the Stephen Brown kid, number two, he's he's their main uh, cog. They what they like to do is run the jet sweep with him. Um, either way, any anywhere on the field, anytime. When he's not running the jet sweep, he's back in a wildcat, and they're running the sweep with him, just leading with the up back and um, uh, a wing and receivers, and just oh, like a overloading it, and he's just gonna pick his hole. We've got to stop that jet sweep. We've got to stop the run first, and they, they do like to throw it. They've got some receivers that can go up and make plays. The quarterback is a freshman, though. He on film, he doesn't look very accurate, but. Um, I will try to pronounce his last name. I don't know his name. <laughs> number eight. Yeah. H-O-E-L-T-J-E. -E. O-G. Anyway. But sorry. the receivers, they go up and they make plays for him. I've seen him complete some long, long passes. And uh, that's why they remind me of Fairmont Senior. They, they have a big play capability. How much speed do they have? Well, the brown kid, he's pre he looks pretty fast. Uh, they have a number 17. A big, tall, wide receiver. Um, he can motor down the field, and he's got good hands, and, and he blocks really well on those uh, outside perimeter plays, that jet sweep. So we're going to have our hands full with number 17, number 2. So you basically going to start out with your same 3-5, uh, or are you going to move to that 4? No, we're going to stick in our base defense. Uh, that's one of the things about this type of defense. You don't really have to make a lot of adjustments. Except when you get a, a team that wants to overpower you, then you got to maybe bring in a D line and take out a linebacker and get some more beef up front. But the thing I like about this defense is there's not a lot of adjustments. You're always balanced, and you just got to have the right personnel at the right place. And again, looking at the, most of it, if you look at the schedule for uh, Hedgesville, most of their games are played against teams out of state that we are not aware of. Of course, Washington, PA, uh, Washington High School Patriots is a new school down in Berkeley County. Mm -hmm. Millbrook, Virginia, Mountain Ridge, Maryland, 
Spring Mills, which is a new school down that area. But they're giving up 50 points a game on defense and only scoring 16 on offense. Yeah, that uh, that sounds about like North Marion. Only uh, Hedgesville has a better offense and more diversified offense than North Marion. So if we come out and play like we're capable of, then um, we'll, have, we'll be in the ball game. We'll have a chance. But if we don't come out focused and with a high level of energy, then it's going to be a long night. And not playing down to their level. And, and, exactly. Yeah, because. So I think our skilled players are, are good you know, with our offense, 28 points a game, and your defense has really, really come around here as the season goes on. Yeah, we're starting to, the defense is starting to get, get an identity, and that's what you need. Is if you want to be a good defense, you got to be, be known for something. And I think the kids are starting to believe that, hey, we can play defense here at Preston. Yeah, because you see five or six of them saying we'll have the same Defense, you got to be able to move and get to that yeah. gap and, and force a double team. If we're trading one for one, we're, that puts us in a big bind. So, Friday night here at Knight Stadium, and we hope that Mother Nature cooperates with us, but look at the forecast. It may be a little rainy uh, here. Of course, it's fall here in Preston County. Well, it's yeah. the start of October already. Friday night here at Knight Stadium, the Hedgesville Eagles, 0-4. A non-conference game will be here. So come up and see our three and two Preston Knights take on the Hedgesville uh, Eagles. Coach, JV team played again uh, Monday night. Real proud of them. Uh, they went down early, 16 to nothing, and came back and beat North Marion's JV team, 18-16. Um, made some mental errors. They had a bad snap on a punt and basically gifted them a touchdown. Then. They picked up a fumble and ran it back to our two. That was another gift touchdown. But after, aside from that, we came back. They kept their cool and drove the football down the field. Scored three touchdowns. So we what? We three and zero or four and one? The JV team. Well, the JV team is I think two and two. Two and two. two and okay. Two. I missed a game somewhere along the line. So JV team's developing tomorrow night. The Roseburg Squires will be playing here on the turf or on the, the stadium. stadium. The stadium. Well, it's more suited for football. Not enough seats out there. In the <laughs> Tomorrow night, field. Wednesday night, the Roseburg Squires, the middle school football team, will be playing here at Knight Stadium. So uh, come on up and uh, watch the team play. Yeah, they're a lot of fun to watch. Uh, we saw them the other night, and they, they were having such a good time. It was inspiring. Coach, any final comments or uh, things about Friday night's uh, game? Uh, Friday night, the students are wanting to wear black. Uh, and we also have, we're going to be giving out some uh, those necklace things that go around your neck. So we're going to light up the nights on this uh, home game. Hopefully the weather doesn't scare anyone away. Uh, these kids are really looking forward to playing at home. They were talking about today. Finally, they get to play at home. And they're excited about that opportunity. So come to Knight Stadium Friday night, wear black, and root the uh, Preston Knights on to win number four. We're, we're going to try. Win number four of the Hedgesville Eagles. So on behalf of our producer and director, Steve Blake, Coach Jonathan Tennant, this is Gary Livengood. Thanking you for watching The Coaches Show.